Welcome to the SVG TV Evening News and Sports for Friday, March 21st. I am Carol Cato, and here are the details. Some 50 farmers are the first to benefit from the $6 million Farmer Support Credit Program coordinated by the Ministry of Agriculture. The handing over of the loan vouchers to the farmers took place earlier today at the Agricultural Input Warehouse in Kingstown. Kristen John Dean has more in this report. The occasion could only be described as a happy day as the smiling farmers joined the queue at the Agriculture Input Warehouse to receive their vouchers from the $6 million Farmer Support Program. The enthused farmers expressed great thanks to the government for the support. Some indicated it will help to boost their production, while others say it will help them to rebuild their farms affected by the natural disasters. One of the farmer who replanted last year and um, right now I'm harvesting one of those fields that I planted last week, last year, sorry. So I will appreciate the, the help that is offered from the government in as much as to help me to boost uh, my agriculture produce and so forth. I find it something very good that the agriculture because a lot of us poor farmers can't afford what we need for our farm. And I'm very thankful that they call me here to give me a help. How long have you been in um, farming? I was in farming about 20 something years, but not a big farmer like now I continue to do some more farming. But I mean, um, food trees for 20 something years. I hope that we are not going backwards. Uh, rather that we, we are going forward, but um, this is a good step now if there's a new trust towards agricultural development. It's a pity that um, those people of my age are few. The young people should have been motivated then to get into agriculture and give them the incentive to want to produce and to feed the nation. I enjoy feeding the nation and I will continue to do that. Meanwhile, one man, a farmer from Leu, says he sees the opportunity for the full development of vanilla. And it is for that reason why he's taken advantage of the credit facility. My name is Atli Jack. I'm from the year. I want to say thanks be to God for a prayer has been answered for the development of vanilla. All right. This is, this is the vanilla plant that is here that I'm working with for many years. All right. And uh, not by chance that I'm working with for many years. This is the plant here. And also this is um, the, the produce as well okay so for many years i've been growing vanilla for more than 20 something years and as a result of growing vanilla for all these years i must say thanks to the the minister of agriculture he noted that the industry can reach very far if persons take it seriously and that it could be twin to with the development of the cocoa industry vanilla has been growing since, since the 18th century and as a result of growing in the 18th century, I was taught, taught by a man by the name of Adolfo Swidley, who was related to the Hoggins in Leo, who were growing vanilla for years. And the, the vanilla is a, is a family secret, so the secret was passed on to me, although I'm not part of the family, but it was passed on to me. And as a result, I've been developing it over the years, all right? The, the time of growth, uh, vanilla, it, it, it's a vine that grew in 75% um, shade, all right? because it's good so that you get the, the, the sun, the hot sun applying to it will have the leaf wrinkling. So as a result, it, it, uh, you need 75% shade. So I have lands where, you know, forests and uh, some in, in the clay. So I have developing now shade houses as a, you know, a suggestion from the, as a suggestion from the, the Ministry of Agriculture so that I can have the shade house and I can do it so that, you know, it uh, can be more successful. The other farmers who will benefit from the Farmer Support Program are expected to receive their monies soon. Kristen John Dean reporting for SVG TV News. In the meantime, Minister of Agriculture Saboto Caesar congratulated the first set of farmers who received their vouchers. He said the program is a good one and he is happy to see persons taking advantage of it. The interest rate is extremely low. It's a 2% interest rate. I know that there are many other companies, businesses, banks, credit unions that are on lending monies at rates that are almost five times that number. I want for all lending institutions to understand and appreciate that the farmer support company is not here to compete. We are here to work. 
because I want to thank organizations such and companies such as the, the NDF, the work of company and commercial banks, which have been lending farmers monies three years. I want to thank them for doing an excellent job thus far. And I want them to, to continue on the path. But the, the, the farmer support company will be on lending the monies at a 2% interest rate. CJ noted that the money would be loaned to farmers producing a variety of crops. It is, is bananas, plantains, root crops, livestock, cocoa. I, I would have learned that um, a vanilla farmer is also in, in, interested, not megs. And we want the farmers to be totally aware and cognizant of the fact that the success of the farmer support company, the success of this credit facility, the ability of the credit facility to revolve depends on the trust of the farmers. Because if farmers borrow and do not repay, then all the sums which are there to be on lent will be depleted. And when, that, when those sums are depleted, of course, it will not be able, other farmers will not be able to benefit from the credit facility. But I have great confidence and I, I have great trust in the farmers of St. Vincent and the Grenadines that we are going to ensure that we take our time and within our means that we are able to, to repay our loans. Agriculture is a business. Three agricultural experts from Taiwan will arrive here this weekend to work with the Ministry of Agriculture and the local Taiwan Agricultural Mission on the final design of a project, dubbed Strengthening Farmers Groups and Product Techniques. The Taiwan Nationals will operate as a fact-finding mission to assess a number of areas targeted in the project, which has emphasis on improved production practices and techniques and marketing. The team will be here from March 23rd to 28th and will be visiting a number of important sites targeted for the development under the EU-funded Banana Adjustment Measures Project, referred to as BAM. Some of the areas will include the proposed marketing depots slated for Belmont, Langley Park and La Croix, as well as the sites for the proposed greenhouse parks. Additionally, the contingent will hold meetings with some of the more active farmers' groups, make assessments of the agricultural input supplies establishments and the cooperatives division, which deals with farmers' cooperatives and groups. The group is expected to make a pre preliminary presentation of its findings and recommendations on Friday the 28th before leaving the state the next day. The project, Strengthening Farmers' Groups and Production Techniques, will be implemented by the Ministry of Agriculture, supported by the local Taiwanese Agricultural Mission. The e-filing project at the Inland Revenue Department is a major component of the Department's Public Awareness Program this month. Comptroller at the department, Kelvin Pompey, told SVGTV News that the electronic filing system started last year, and so far, most of their data is online. Uh, we have gotten on our most of, uh, well, a large amount, percentage, of our VAT registrants are now filing VAT um, online on a monthly basis. We are currently working with our payroll, PAYE, to, to have that on, and currently, we are the focus is on uh, getting employees onto the new system and we have our e-filing unit that's been set up and for the last month and a half they have actually been working with um, dozens of businesses and uh, private and public sector organizations to assist persons in getting registered and uh, getting using the electronic means of filing their 2013 tax returns. Pompey said the e-filing system is a necessary step for any department that wishes to increase its levels of efficiency. Because in today's world, you, I, I think efficiency means giving the taxpayer or the person an opportunity to comply at their time, at their place. And so an electronic filing system now means that a taxpayer can get up at midnight and take the five or ten minutes it, he, he needs to file a return. And so it means that that person is no longer restricted by the clock 
and have to run to meet our, our closed doors at, at, at 3 p.m. or things like that. And so it is going to increase overall efficiency and compliance of persons. Of course, for those persons who decide that they were not going to comply under the old system, we think that the e-filing may not be sufficient um, to, 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 to get them on board. But it is a welcome um, change and we are seeing persons um, very eagerly um, calling for us to give assistance in them to, to, to utilize this new system. Regional airline Liat is at the moment in search of a new chief executive officer. Prime Minister and Chair of Liat shareholder government, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, says that over 200 applications have been received to fill the position. Dr. Gonzalez also indicated that the present acting CEO, Julie Reefer Jones, is also available to be considered for the post. Shareholders are not dealing with that. This is the board, the board of directors, and I understand over 200 applicants worldwide have applied for the CEO job. So it must mean a lot of people see this as an important airline all over the world, whereas many persons at home want to just bang it up with words. And a lot of times, I listen to some fellas, and I wonder how far men are going to take political axes and grind them. Judy Reefer Jones has been acting CEO since the departure of Brian Challenger, who resigned in June, on June 30th, 2012. Bernie Keynes of the Bowley Government School has been named the winner of this year's Ministry of Education NIS Grade 5 Public Speaking Competition. Bernie edged out nine other competitors to take the top spot as overall winner. She was also adjudged the best prepared speech on the topic religious education should be an important part of the school's curriculum if we wish to reduce the incidence of crime and acts of violence in our land. Studies have shown that children are shaped by their environment between ages 2 to 7. Madam Chairperson, if a parent takes your child where gambling is practice, that child will learn to gamble. If a child sees daddy beating mommy, that child may become violent as well. Madam Chairperson, can we sit back and allow our children to become menace to society? I say no! My school's vision says, I quote, to cater for the holistic development of the students, thereby fostering discipline and productive citizens. End of quote. Madam Chairperson, I am putting it to you that the curriculum package without religious instruction will only produce more educated persons who lack the fear of God. Zaida Davis of the Marioqua Government School was adjudged second overall and also received the award for Best Impromptu Speech, speaking on the topic, My Idea of Total Pleasure. Javin George of the C.W. Prescott Primary School was third. The Grade 5 Public Speaking Competition is held annually to promote and support literacy activities in the primary schools to foster literacy appreciation, to enhance language competencies across the curriculum, and to develop research skills even at the primary level. Meanwhile, addressing the participants and those present at the event, Chief Education Officer Luan Gilchrist says speech is powerful and can be used that can be both constructive and destructive. If you are about to say something which you know in your heart is not true, because speech is power, you can damage your relationship with your best friend. You can hurt that person. For example, if you tell an untruth, especially willfully, then you are destroying your relationship, you are destroying somebody's life, and it is very hard to mend broken relationships. So speech being powerful should be used wisely, it should be used honestly, it should be used with love. Representing the National Insurance Services, the NIS, Marketing Manager Don Small says over the past 11 years, the NIS has been a contributor to the school's literacy program, and the department prides itself in being a good corporate citizen, looking out for both the old and the young, as she emphasized the importance of literacy. We believe that literacy is fundamental for learning in school. 
since it has positive implications on a person's ability to participate in society and to help them to understand important public issues. Moreover, literacy provides the base upon which the skills and expertise needed for the labor market are built. While literacy has been traditionally referred to as the ability to read and write, the paradigm has shifted to include a broader understanding of equipping individuals to live full, independent, healthy and productive lives and enhance social inclusion in any society. We are living in a very complex and dynamic world so the literacy of a nation's population has a bearing on the performance of the country. Two-time breast cancer survivor Maggie Gardner is using her battle with the illness to sensitize other women and men here about the issue. Speaking at a forum hosted by Sir Optimist International at the Police Training School on Wednesday, the Vincentia native who resides in Connecticut in the USA spoke of her journey as a cancer patient, now a survivor. Gardner said she established an organization to give persons hope called Gardner's House. She added that in many instances, persons beat themselves up as the cause of their illness. Always hereditary. It's not always something that you did most of all people think well have this mentality that you've done something while you got cancer but there are certain factors they're still doing research to find out what causes cancer at gardener's house we deal with not just breast cancer but all types of cancers because cancer affect everyone the same way Gardner said she had no history of breast cancer and her diagnosis came as a shock. She said at one point she even wanted to take the easy way out through suicide. When I said I thank God for not answering my prayers, I literally wanted to die because that was the easiest way out. Because it wasn't the cancer because I can, I can, I can fight it because I've been down that road before. But it's, it's the abandonment, that's one of the things that comes with um, having cancer. You lose friends, you lose family, you lose spouse. You know, so if you notice that, I don't know if anybody in here have been affected by cancer or know of someone or have a family member, and people walk around you on eggshells, and they don't know what to say, and eventually they just disappear. And while there are a number of factors listed as triggers of cancer cells, Gardner says from her experience, stress plays a significant role in the diagnosis of the disease. She said statistics have shown that one in every eight women will be diagnosed with cancer. Stress is one of the triggers that can activate the cells because as doctor will tell you, cells are what causes uh, really where cancer develops. It's like having children and some of them gone wild or something, but it's basically something that's in you. It's not something that you get from outside and then, you know, it comes into you. Because when you are upset, six days out of seven days, when you hold stuff in, it has to go somewhere. So whatever the, the stress, it, you, it turns on the body and it has to come out whether in high blood pressure, even though you know, you're eating and habits, but stress is one of the main factors. The doctors used to say, oh no, that's not true, but I tell them yes, and now they are looking at it, that stress is one of the triggers of cancer. Today, the Central Water and Sewage Authority brought the curtains down on a week of activities to mark World Water Day 2014, which is commemorated annually on March 22nd. Activities held during the week, which started on March 16th, included a church service at the Kingstown Methodist Church, followed by a school's visit on Monday, Customer Appreciation Day on Tuesday, and an open day at the landfills across the island on Wednesday. Thursday featured the school's career guidance fair, where each of the CWSA's departments prepared separate booths detailing the special tasks of their respective departments and what qualifications prospective employees would need to satisfy in order to pursue a career, a career in these fields. Among the schools that attended the fair were third form students of the Girls High School, the St. Vincent Grammar School, St. Martin Secondary, St. Joseph's Convent, Kingstown, the J.P. Eustace Memorial, Intermediate High, Thomas Saunders, and Bishop's College, Kingstown. 
Water Week 2014 culminated with the execution of a community project where the CWSA replaced an old water storage tank at the Vinsafe Preschool located at Richmond Hill. World Water Day was celebrated this year under the theme Water and Energy.